So this is the Pinion Gearbox, and I thought I would share with you my thoughts and opinions. I wanted to do a video specifically on the Pinion Gearbox. It was on a demo bike, the Zeroed Tanifar. I did not want to do a review on the Zeroed and obsess about the Gearbox the whole time, so I thought I would get the Gearbox out of the way so I can do a review on the Zeroed just on the bike and how it performs, not necessarily all in the Gearbox. So what is it? Um, the Gearbox is a new bicycle drivetrain technology that originated from motorsport. Yes, it's another way to shift through gears, but it's how the bike operates as a whole that makes this bike revolutionary and this kind of system revolutionary. So how does it work? From the exterior, it may look like a single speed because it only uses one drive ring and one cog, but the real magic happens inside the gearbox itself. The internal transmission is made up of 12 gears in a sealed housing that is centrally located around the bottom bracket. The transmission is very similar to that of an automobile or motorcycle transmission. It consists of an input shaft, sub-transmission, planetary gears, and an output shaft, giving off an impressive 600% range. So now you know how the system works, and I'd like to share with you some pros and cons of the system, because nothing is perfect. So the real benefit you get from the system using a gearbox is a significant improvement in suspension performance. Because of all the unsprung weight, having no cassette, no derailleur, you have a lot less weight. So the benefit of having less unsprung weight is when you hit that bump, there's less weight to move out of the way for every single bump you hit. So your suspension can be a lot more active. It was actually crazy the first time I rode this system. I went down a hill in Joaquin Miller Park, and I honestly felt like I couldn't feel anything. Like I had no contact with the ground. The suspension was so good, I was getting zero feedback from the bike. So I couldn't really control the bike properly because I really could not feel anything. So it was one of those things you have to get used to, but I was just so surprised how good the suspension actually works with just that little bit of less unsprung weight. Also, it has a super wide gear range, so it has 600%, and they even make an 18 speed gearbox, which I think has even like 800 something percent. But basically you get a super wide range. 600% is gnarly. So SRAM Eagle is like 500%, and that's kind of how much a double like 2x10 used to have in the past. So you get a range that's almost so large that you don't need the easiest gear, and you don't even need the hardest gear. It's just that big of a range. So basically you have a gear for whatever you'll get yourself into. Also the weight is really centralized. So it actually, you wouldn't really believe this, but when you jump, the nose doesn't pitch forward and the nose doesn't pitch back. It actually jumps really predictably. And then it just feels really stable down the trail. Like it almost feels like your reach is longer than it really is. You get the same kind of stability feeling out of that. Say like my Firebird has a 20 mil longer reach than the Z road I rode, but I kind of got the same feeling of stability from both bikes because the weight was so low and centralized. It kind of gave me that extra stability. Another advantage is a stronger rear wheel because of the spoke bracing angles. If you're only running one cog on the rear of the bike, you can actually run equal spoke bracing angles on the rear. So you get a stiffer wheel and stronger, and you don't even need boost. You don't need 148. You can just run a wheel with 142, and that can be narrower, so you're less likely to hit it on rocks and stuff when you go through tight pinches. That being said, it's also more crash resistant because you don't have that derailleur hanging off the edge of your bike to get caught up on things. And why all of you would really like this bike is because there's absolutely no maintenance. I guess not absolutely, but every two to three years you have to change the oil on the system. Basically the pinion system is guaranteed for the life of your bicycle. So that's gonna be like six, seven years. You're not gonna have any problems with wearing out, replacing parts. You'll be good for six to seven years with like two oil changes. Also with that low maintenance, the chains last seasons. So you can probably get like one, two years out of the chain. So basically when you wanna do that oil change, you wanna change the chain. Cause the chain has no shifting along the back, along a cassette. You're not wearing out any bushings and the chain really doesn't stretch that badly. And also one of the main points uh, Pinion likes to say is you can shift without pedaling and it's instantaneous. So with that grip shifter, you can be coasting down the hill and shift from your easiest gear all the way to your hardest gear seamlessly. And the next time you get on your pedals, you'll be in that hard gear. It doesn't take any shifting load to kind of reset it into a different gear. And also it's instantaneous, so the second you touch it, it's in that gear. So you, I don't know, 
it's instead of uh, shifting and then going down the trail, throwing like a pedal stroke to shift the gear, it's there right when you need it. So the pinning gearbox allows you to build an optimized chain line. So you can put your suspension pivot right at the top of your chain ring. So basically you have no influence from your chain on the suspension. That's also why the suspension feels so supple. You're not combating the forces of the chain every time a bump hits the rear axle. And because the chain line is optimized, it pedals uphill really well with almost no bob. So that was a lot of pros, but it can't be without the cons as well. So unfortunately, it does have a weight penalty. So you're looking at about 800 grams over a typical derailleur system like XX1 or so. So that's almost two pounds. That's a considerable amount of weight, but you gotta understand where the weight is. You took it off the rear axle and you put it centrally in the bike and you are getting that stability because of that weight. Also, you can't really shift under power. So when you're mashing the Hell pedals, yeah. you can't really get a gear out which became a problem when I was racing. I raced a California Enduro Series the Guaranteed other weekend the on the Zero. Right and unfortunately, when I was pedaling really hard and I needed that extra gear, I had to let up to shift. So that's kind of annoying in a race situation. But if you're just riding, I honestly never noticed it once. Also, a problem I had was drag. And not drag, just easy pedaling. Not drag that you would normally notice on a standard ride. But if you're putting the power down, if you're sprinting, you definitely feel like the drag exponentially grows the more power you put out. So maybe your standard drag would be about 2% if you're just cruising down the road, so you barely even feel it, especially because the chain line is so straight. It's probably identical to a standard transmission, but when you start actually cranking out the pedals, you can feel like a considerable amount of drag. Not enough where it's ridiculous, but it's something that I feel like could be improved in the future. Also, it comes with a grip shifter. Um, Yes, you can look at the grip shifter and be like, yeah, it's on a target bike. Um, it actually worked really well, but my only issue was in racing, I had to move my hand over to the side to shift a little bit, which was a very awkward motion to do. I'm sure you could get used to it, but I don't think that's the most efficient way to do it. So I really don't prefer the grip shifter, but unfortunately that's the only way you can do it right now because the grip shifter actually has no indexing in it. The indexing is in the system itself near the gearbox. So you need a shifter that you can push, pull a cable, and twist it. Another con I felt was there was pretty low engagement on the bottom bracket itself. So the bottom bracket as well as the rear hub have a ratchet system. So the rear was 120 point engagement, and the front had to be like 10 point. It was very excessive, and I, could, I couldn't feel it on the trail, to be honest. But uh, when you're doing like those parking lot tricks and having fun and stuff, you definitely feel it. And it makes like wheelies and chopping stuff a little bit harder and like ratcheting over logs. And the last con I felt was that uh, there are 12 gears and you do have that 600% range. So you have to have a little <laughs> bit more spacing between the gears to get that range. So it actually has 17.7% spacing, which is quite a bit more than Trammer Shimano. And that's another thing I really <coughs> never felt until I was racing and I was climbing up this hill mid race run on an enduro race and I found out I was in between gears so I was shifting between the gears and I was having to let up between the gears so I lost like five seconds on that hill just trying to find the right gear letting up getting into a different gear it's definitely something you could prevent by anticipating the hill and maybe going a little harder before the hill so you can carry a little more speed so it's definitely just takes getting used to the drivetrain but I feel like they could have had less excessive spacing. But the real question is, do I see this as the future of mountain biking? So I'd have to say yes. I feel like the shifting we have on today's bikes is actually kind of ancient technology. It's been 100, 200 years since we've changed it up. Obviously it's uh, improved from then, but it's still the same basic need. I feel like now when I ride my Pivot Firebird with like a Shimano drivetrain, I feel like every time I shift, I feel like the chain's just gonna snap right there. It's actually a scary feeling to shift now. It, it does not feel very good. And I definitely think um, this gearbox technology is the future of mountain biking. But it does need a few improvements to surpass the standard drivetrain. So in my opinion, I don't know why they don't have a fixed rear hub. If you think about it, you don't need that secondary uh, ratcheting system if you already have it around the bottom bracket shell. So there should definitely be a fixed rear hub, and that would also help with weight savings. Imagine a hollow hub instead of a hub with all this system inside of it. And then if you have that zero engagement rear hub because it's fixed, 
um, you would definitely want a little more engagement up at the crank side. So if they had like an Onyx style clutch system for instant engagement on the ratcheting system on the crank set, I think that would be a huge improvement. So that brings back like the ratcheting over logs and instant engagement is a good thing. Also to get rid of the grip shift, um, if they went DI2 or ETAP style, like electronic shifting, that would actually give you the ability to shift under power. The only reason this system can't shift under power is because you can't pull the grip shifter hard enough. So if you think about a motorcycle transmission, you can actually shift without the clutch. Yes, it's harsh on the drivetrain, but you can actually shift just by banging through the gears because you have enough leverage. So if there's an electronic system, that will fix the shifting under power, and then that would make it perfect for a racing application. Another thing they could do is lighten the crank arms or just make the system lighter in general. Two pounds is quite a considerable amount of weight. I know they put the weight in a good spot, but I do think it could get lighter. If there's any way to reduce drag, that would always be a benefit. So those are the pros, cons, what I think about the future of the product. But you really have to get on one. The suspension performance is second to none. I've never felt a bike that's so stable and so active on the ground. It really sticks to the trail, and I really do think it's the future of mountain biking. So uh, hopefully in the next five to 10 years, we'll see it on every major mountain biking brand and everyone's life will be easier with less maintenance. So I hope you thought this video was interesting and comment below if you have any thoughts you'd like to share on this product. Um, I think the gearbox is really interesting and there's definitely gonna be some naysayers, Sick. but I just wanna hear what you guys have to think. That being said, I'm sure you'll have a great time riding your standard bike as it is. And I hope to see you guys out on the trails. <coughs> Cheers.